In this video, I want to talk about the one thing that helped me go from, you know, 150K in debt a few years ago to where last year we generated over $10 million in our company. Now, those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Bashar Kentu and I own BJK University, an online university that teaches people how to start an online business with $10,000 or less and within about 90 days and simply taking a skill and turning it into a, a high income skill or a business online. Um, you see, when I first started, um, one huge thing that we see out there and that many people talk about, and I know for me it was a huge thing as well, was you know, how do we take 10 years worth of, worth of accomplishments or worth of work and accomplish it in one year, right? And you've even heard probably Elon Musk talk about this. And this is really important when you're first starting out to really take action and to really get going and to really get started because a lot of people fall into the, the procrastination mode and the I'll do it tomorrow mode and the I'll do it next year. And that's why it's kind of crazy because when I go to the gym on Mondays, there's like 20 people, but then Tuesdays there's like 15, Wednesdays there's like 12. And then by the time it's Friday, like Friday, Saturday evenings, there's literally nobody in the gym. And that's simply because, you know, people fall into the habit of procrastination and I do it until today. You know, videos, these videos that I'm making right now, I do them on Saturdays. And usually my goal is to start on at nine o'clock in the morning and finish by 11 o'clock. And, you know, sometimes I'll start at 9.30, sometimes 9.45, sometimes 10 o'clock, sometimes, you know, it's one o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't even started. Why? Because human nature, we're just used to procrastinating. And that's why it's very important that we set a target and then we set a timeline so that way we can accomplish that in that timeline. But the other thing that I realized that truly helped me out was that whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish or whatever it is that you're trying to get, desire, whatever you have desires inside of, your, your inside of you, do understand that it is not a sprint, but it's a marathon. And here's what I mean by that. So ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to own a, well not own, but yeah, own, I guess. I wanted to own a Rolls Royce. It was something that I always wanted. And really a huge part of it was because my father um, wanted a Rolls Royce and he could afford it. He was a very wealthy man in the 80s and 90s. But then after the war in Iraq, he literally lost everything. And back in the 90s, he was trying to buy a Rolls Royce and bring it to Iraq from London, but the, the government in Iraq didn't even allow him to do that. And without getting into politics, he always wanted one. So kind of me having my dad being my idol growing up, I always thought I kind of had a moral obligation for me to buy Rolls Royce because my father would be so proud of me because I've always wanted my father to be proud of me. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys can resonate with that. And I just always liked that. And as I started kind of coming up in my you know, career, I used to look around and, and, and you know, you see the typical guru running around in a Lamborghini or a Ferrari or whatever, and I just was never interested in that. But the one car that I always wanted, I said, you know, if I ever buy a luxury car, it's a Rolls Royce, you know? And when I started being able to afford it, like when I started realizing that, you know, I am coming up at the point where I can actually afford this car, and I started going and looking at, you know, how much it would lease for, how much do I need to put down. And it's not only just that, you know, you need to have good credit. You need to make sure that, you know, you own some property, you own some assets. Like they want to make sure that you are someone. It's not just anyone can go and buy it. Now, obviously, because I'm going to be financing it or leasing it, but you can go and buy a cash. But that would be just stupid because the minute you walk out of the dealer, it could drop 5, 10, 20 percent in, in value although Rolls Royces don't uh, drop in value as much. But what I realized is, you know, I was putting pressure on myself. Over the last three months, I've been putting pressure on myself because in two months, our car lease, we only have one car, our car lease is going to actually end. And, and, and it was time for us to start shopping for a new car, especially now with cars just simply not being around. And what I realized is, you know, I want to buy the Rolls Royce because I know with our company's monthly profit, I can buy a couple cash so I can completely afford it. You know, a monthly lease would make up like half a percent of our monthly revenue. But still, it was like this big burden. And for three months, I was looking at, you know, a, a, you know, kind of redoing my, my finances and then kind of also looking at like if I 
because the lease is going to be five, six, seven thousand dollars per month, right? So I'm also thinking about maybe getting into real estate later on this year or next year, right? And and the way that that would work is they would look at our balance sheet. What are your assets? What are your liabilities? And now you've got a five, six, seven thousand dollar a month liability. So that means your borrowing power to borrow money is going to become less simply because you have more liabilities, you have more payments that you have to pay every single month. And I started thinking about that. And for three months, it became a burden. And I started taking time out of my business to think about this thing that after really looking into it, it just simply did not make sense because it wasn't something, it wasn't a business decision. It wasn't a decision that's going to improve my lifestyle. It wasn't a decision that's going to really make me a better human or a better husband or a better you know, leader or a better uh, 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 teacher or whatever, right? It was just something completely out of desire. And some of you might look and say, but Bashar, why are you working then? You know, if you're working so hard and you're making all this money, it's not like you're going to take it to the grave with you. And that is 100% and I agree with you. But this is when I realized that, you know what? It's not a sprint. It's, not, it's a marathon. If I don't get it today, I'll get it next year. I'll get it the year after. I'll get it the year after that. I'm not going to die in two or three years. At least I don't think I will. You just never know. But when you approach certain things and, and certain desires, and this is really important when it comes to things like desires and wants because a lot of us want a lot of things in life a lot of us desire a lot of things in life a lot of us really want to accomplish a lot of things in life but if you understand and you kind of take a step back for just a quick second and realize that you know what it is not a sprint it's a marathon your decision making is going to change. Now, when you're first starting out in your career, it's very important that you become an action taker, that you start doing things and that you grow that muscle. Because any habit and any one thing that you do in your life is just like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the more of it you do, the bigger that muscle gets. And the same thing with decision making. The same thing with you know uh, uh, um, wanting to accomplish certain things. The same thing with crushing your goals. You have to do more of it so that way it becomes a, just a natural thing that is just another thing that you do. And then you can start you know, increasing or decreasing or trying to do more of it or less of it. But when I realized this one concept that it's a, a marathon and not a sprint, a lot of my decision making in my business started also changing because as I was growing in my business, I was sometimes realizing that, you know what? I was making half-assed decisions just simply because I saw so much opportunity. I'm like, you know what? I need to seize everything. I need to seize the entire opportunity. And then what I would do is I would make half-assed decisions and I would say, let's rush it. And I would rush into things. And that's another thing is, you know, you don't want to rush into things, especially decisions that have to do with your, that are life-changing, that are career-changing, you know? But there's a caveat to that because there's the other side of the coin because you also don't want to procrastinate and, 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 and simply just take too long to make decisions and take weeks, months, and years to do something and you need to jump. So that's why I'm saying it's very important that you put everything in front of you, all of your decisions in front of you and then look at it as, you know, what is that fine line of I need to actually get going and take action and then the other thing, the other side of it where I need to, you know, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon and I need to, I don't, I, you know, I don't need to just always go, 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 get, 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 do, 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 because again, I might be half-assing this, uh, uh, these decisions or I might be, you know, putting myself into a situation that I might not like the, the, the outcome of, right? With that said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe and drop your comments in the comment section below. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.